Those of you who are watching on Ustream, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, it's on. Yes. Okay, let me ask um let me ask um Alexis if you on the line could you say a big welcome to to Vadim's family on the line? Alexis, go ahead and tell the people about the anniversary. Yeah. Alexis, I'm very proud of you, girl. Um, Maxin, do you want to talk about the House of Destiny? If Maxin is okay, go ahead.
Yeah, Max, Max and while you're on the on the line, um, last night uh, we were very brave to ask each of you how you perceive what God is doing through me, how you perceive my um, obedience, not just to being called, chosen, sent. How do you perceive the overall picture of what I'm doing, what God is doing through me? How do you perceive it? And so many of you sent email those who didn't want to speak during the conference because you were watching on Ustream. Um, Maxine and I, we've discussed um, and also I've talked with some of you. What we have come to agree is that there are things that will be happening in, in different segments. I also want the ministry also to be seen from the perspective of its spiritual aspect, its political aspect, its, bu its business aspect. So if I am right, they are going to be, if you have a very big money, and you do not want to sow it as a seed or as a donation. You can also give to the ministry a sum of money as an investment. We can work that out with you so that you become a shareholder in our ministry. But these are things that we will finally work out, but we will begin to collect the money so as to begin to go into different, different things we want to do. Um, there are things that you should invest now so that you reap in the future. So, Maxine and I will spend some time to think. I, I mean, the few um, minutes we put our heads together today, we were able to in a sentence, capture everything you were saying about the ministry and about the office that I occupy and the ministry that works through, not just me, but through you all. You see, the kind of ministry and church that I am into with you all is not the type that you see in the church you go to. In the church you go to, the pastor is the actor or the actress. In us, you are the actor and the actress. My job is the job of the administrator of the gifts. Magazine, write that down. I'm just an uh, Gigi, if you are also there, please write. Two people could be right here at the same time. I am simply an administrator, a facilitator of your gifts, which means my job is to give you opportunity to manifest profits, happiness, the supernatural. That's my job. While we are ministering, if God wanna, if there is something the Holy Spirit is putting inside your thoughts, you can stop me. Not in a rowdy way, and then I will stop. And let the Holy Spirit minister to us a little bit also through you. Prophecy shall happen. Healing shall happen. Raising the dead shall happen. Workings of miracles. The gift of faith. The gift of encouragement. All these things shall be happening. Every gathering we shall see these gifts exploding. Not just from the pastor. But from all of you, the problem why most of you do not exhibit your gift 
is because you've gone through the faculty or department of churches that put your gift in a Pepsi, in a Pepsi or Coca-Cola or 7-Up bottle and locked it. Why? Because they believe you have not yet gone through pastoral training. No, 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 no. When it comes to the manifestation of the Spirit, I mean, they, they're supposed to be order, but your gift should be in operation when the body of Christ meets. Your gift should be in operation. That's how this thing works. In every gathering, all the gifts should be exploding. My job is to call your gift to manifest. My job is not only to call demons to manifest and I cast them out. My job is to call your gift to manifest so that it will bless people. That's the kind of church that we are going to raise. So, Maxine, can you share with them what finally is the theme of our ministry and why? never felt at peace like after sharing with Maxine and instantly the Holy Spirit went to work with us because I'm like how do we pull all this together how do we pull it together I'll be I'll be I'll be talking to somebody on the phone instantly my spirit will go up there is the spirit of Baal there is Leviathan there is this there is the spirit that makes two people to quarrel and by the time I will be, that person will no longer be in that conversation with me, the devil will begin to use the person's mouth and begin to speak and say, yes, I know you now, I'm there. I'm going to leave. I don't want to mess with you, the guy Mary. They know my name. Before I could shout the blood of Jesus, they are gone. The person is on the floor. So it's like just things just keep manifesting. So I don't have control over it. And I've been struggling. What's going to be the thing? I'll be talking to somebody by the time you know they are loving in the spirit. They are, that sadness, the spirit of sadness flee. They are loving. They are shouting, Jesus. Everything is just happening. Amen. I told uh, yeah, a man told me about his restaurant. People were not coming there to eat. So I told him at this time tomorrow, people will line up from inside the restaurant and they will be standing almost out there to the main road. He told me it's not possible. I said, don't argue with me, sir. That's dangerous to do. At that particular time, the following day, people were lining up from inside to the outside, waiting for their turn to be given a seat to sit down to eat. These are miracles that I see all the time. I tell people, walk away from that marriage so that your opportunity will begin. Because heaven calls me opportunity provider. And they walk away from the marriage, every good thing begins to happen to them. 
Some I will tell them, walk back into that marriage. And they walk back into that marriage. Every good thing begins. Tonight, I'm going to begin to share with you about something that is, 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 a, is a part of a book that I'm going to be working slowly with magazine until it comes. This might be something that might even happen quicker. I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time to dwell on what I'm about to talk to you about tonight. What I'm going to share with you is spirit and life. And the natural also. It's about the natural world in which we live. Overcome. By the imposition. Of supernatural principles. On your own part. That will make it work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was looking at your chapel. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. Listen to what the Spirit of God dropped into my spirit as the the prolegomena, which means the introduction, the prelim to what we are going to be dealing with. When you choose, listen to this, when you choose, by the way, if you didn't know, I'm Idikai Mary. So, listen to what the Holy Spirit said to me. When you choose to solve someone else's problems, God then will choose, excuse me, <coughs> all right, I now know, thank you, thank you, when you choose to solve someone else's problems, or when you choose to pick a particular problem you are passionate about to solve, God then chooses to solve your own problem. Amen. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. The bigger, listen again to what he said to me today. The bigger the problem you choose to solve, the bigger the generosity of God through human being, the compensation, the riches, the wealth, the money that it will give you. The bigger the problem you choose. Tonight, um, Ms. Geneva, are you there with me tonight? I think she probably is watching on YouTube. I'm here. Okay. Remind me before we leave tonight. When once I'm about to finish, remind all of us. But that's going to be our prayer point. Our only prayer tonight, except the Holy Spirit of our role is, is going to be, so take note, you are going to, you are going to spearhead it. And by then you're going to jump in. The prayer you're going to ask us to pray. Miss Geneva is going to be that the Holy Spirit, our captain, our helper, will choose for us location of favor and a big problem for us to solve. So that we will be compensated, rewarded big. Money is a reward. For solving problem. You solve small problem, you get small money. You solve big problem, you get big money.
That's what the Holy Spirit told me. The bigger the problem you choose to solve, the bigger your reward. That is, that is the shortest cut to prosperity. Remember what I teach. Maxine wrote, write this down. The manifestation of the blessing is tied down. The manifestation of the blessing is tied down to the utilization or investment of what you are naturally gifted. Please write that down. That's interesting. Please, if you have kids, mute your phone. We love them babies. And if you are walking in your home, walking about, cooking, doing all that while you are listening, I'm very appreciative, but mute your phone. Now let's begin. I'm sharing with you a part of my book. A little bit, just a little bit of it. The prosperity and riches you are looking for, the shortcut to prosperity, the shortcut to the releasing of what is in the blessing, the shortcut to the releasing of what is in the blessing is investing yourself to solve a problem that you are naturally talented to. Please write that down. The shortest cut to prosperity, to wealth, to big money, to money is the investment of what you are naturally gifted. So, to solve a problem. Abraham solved a problem for himself and for God. Let's begin from there. God said to him, man, I want you to begin something new. This is something that you are going to walk away from your family. Many of you, because of spells and witchcraft, cannot walk away from members of your families who are determined to kill you or determined to, to make you useless and not have anything. By the way, I want to I wanna thank the son of Linda of Virginia. Linda, are you there tonight? I want to thank your son. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm here. Tell him that I said thank you. Okay, what to say? Linda? Yes. Tell your son that I said thank you. Okay, I sure the, will. The one whose name starts with T, like Tom T. You know what woman I'm talking about. Okay. 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 Well, both of them, they're, they're twins, so one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, okay, say say a big say a big thank you to 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 uh I'll I'll call you and tell you the one the one whose name is there, okay? Okay. All right. Um okay. and also I want to thank you, my most beloved lady, Major. Make sure you tell Rosemary that. Tell Rosemary, your mom and your father, the, the medical doctor, tell both of them uh, that, that I sent my, my greetings. Now let's continue. I also want to thank you, Lee of Australia. You mean a lot to me. Andrew, if you are watching this program, you need to give me a call. We need to connect. All right. Now let's start. 
If God has given you a dream and a vision for his kingdom, and he has said to you, I want to concentrate and focus on this, then you leave everything like Paul and Peter and Andrew and the rest of them. They followed Jesus. Of course, they were paid staff. Except Paul, I mean, when they were with Jesus, he took care of them financially because these people had families. God said to Abraham, join me in the new thing I'm about to do in world history through you. You may not be able to see it all, but believe me for what I've told you. I'm going to make you a great nation. Before the blessing, the acceptance for God to make something great and big out of you is very important. So always give God his portion, then God will give you his fatness. Please write that down for me, Martin. Give God his portion. Allow God to have his way, then God will give you your way. Please write that down. Allow God to have his way first, then he will give you your way. Let's go. Abraham believed God. First time we see somebody practicing faith. Okay, you've spoken. I'm going to obey you. God then became a debtor to Abraham. When you say yes to God, this, this, this ministration tonight is very important. More important than anything else I've ever said to you. When you say yes to God's vision, prophetic utterance, as far as that prophecy is from God, that vision, that dream is from God. If you are you with me tonight, I hope you are there. If you say yes to God, then God owes you a debt. I want you to, to be aware of this. I'm going to show you the different people that owes you money. Tonight, I'm going to show you. And you're going to ask for your money. You're going to ask for your houses. There are people who owe you houses. There are people who owes you cars. There are people who owes you a fat bank account. There are people who owes you a kid's scholarship. There are people who, so I'm going to tell you who they are. And you're going you're gonna to ask by force. Because the kingdom of God is only, it's only taken by force. It's not just something that you go to beg. You go in to take it. Faith is far more important than science. But you're going to need empirical reasoning too. You're going to need the sciences. You're going to need everything. For everything to be in order. So listen to what I'm going to tell you. Abraham moved away. To a land that he knew nobody. Just like I did. Just like some of you have done. Oh my goodness. Who is that? Who is that? Can you mute your phone if there is something you are doing please. Or oh, people are doing something around you. Can you mute your phone? You will still be hearing what I'm saying. Please, please, please. All right. When Abraham moved away because of what God told him, because of the promise God has made to him, just like there is a promise to everyone who believe in Jesus, have asked Jesus to be their own God, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You are qualified for money, for help, everything. 
And if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you are qualified for more. You are entitled for more. You become even a unique personality. Uncommon person. Let's go ahead. God did give to Abraham more than a son. He turned him into a kingdom and many kingdoms, many nations today. Even back then, he became rich, very successful. Why? Abraham chose to solve a problem for God. God wanted to start anew. Abraham said, I'm willing that you use me to start something that will affect the entire world history. People of God, hear me clearly tonight. If you are willing to solve a problem for God, God will be willing to solve a problem for you. Please, Maxine, write that down. Amen. Amen. If you will be willing, I am speaking from the bottom of my heart tonight to you. Hallelujah. If you will be willing to solve a problem for God that will, that will affect the entire world, God will be willing to solve your own personal problem. Jacob was willing to solve the problems of Laban. And even though Laban cheated him, God decided to compensate him. Now let me throw in something there for you to know. If you are in the right place, and God's satellite is on you. Even though people might want to cheat you or are cheating you. Speaking tonight to someone like Alexis and the rest of you who are into different skilled occupation, including Beatrice, including Geneva including Mama G. I mean, so many of you who have been cheated out of wages, out of happiness, including Ruby, including Liz, and so many of you. One way or the other, life has cheated you of entitlement. Make sure you go to God to get your reward. Your reward card is with God. God told me something. He said, when you minister to people and they do not want to reward you, compensate you, bless you for what you've done, don't run after them because there is a punishment for them. Wait for me. I will raise other people to give you in their place. That's the way you should be thinking. So God showed Joseph, uh, Jacob how to get his own reward. For many of you, you are going to be the one to crown yourself, to put the crown on your own head. When there is nobody to crown you, God then will give you the power to put a crown on your own head. Please write that down. When human beings refuse to put a crown on your head that you are legally entitled to, could some of you move a little bit away from your phone? Please, because you are disturbing the rest of us. Please, please, please. Uh, can somebody speak to this person who doesn't want to listen to us? Whoever calls to the Ustream or the phone, can you 
please mute the phone or the U stream because you're way too close and you're disturbing us. Thank you. I what I said is if you are in a in a in a program like this, just make sure you are coming really to listen to this so that you might make good use of it. What I'm sharing, I'm not doing a show. I'm trying to I'm I'm bring you something that God wants you to know so that it can save your life. The reason why most of you you remain where you are is you've chosen to do too many things. At the same time, you are not able to finish one thing. That's the reason you're having problems today. God is going to give you power. That power also means revelation, knowledge, people. I am reaching a place where I'm not going to be asking God for money anymore. All I'm going to be asking will be for him to give me a problem to solve that will reward me. Not just, just solve problems for people and they go away. No, no, no. Problems to solve big problems. Today I prayed a prayer. I told God how many billions of dollars problem I want to solve. I'm willing to solve such a big problem for such a big money. Because solving problem is the shortest cut to wealth. Expecting financial miracle, money, houses, all this to be handed over to you is a good thing. But sometimes you're going to wait forever. Until some people pass this away before they give it to you. Or you're going to work so hard to please people before they give it to you. You're going to fight so hard. But the shortest cut is for you independently to ask the Holy Spirit to release a problem. Somebody's problem. Make sure you add it must be a problem that you're going to be paid to some amount of money. Do not just ask for a problem to solve. Ask for a problem to solve that will compensate you successfully. Don't work for free. Please never work for any human being for free. Never pray for it or fast or minister to anybody for free. Never get married. Never stay in a marriage for free. Please don't do it. Don't work for anybody's company or corporation for free. Don't do it. Ask the Holy Ghost, our God and our Captain, to choose where you can solve a big problem for a big sum of wealth riches, money. That's the new way you should be praying. I will pray for miracle. But I will also pray for this. What I'm talking about tonight. Lando Kushata Mbarabu Biasi Li Karambrasu Kandombratua Florence, are you on the line tonight? Please, if you are, let me know. Lekonda basuka debra tua kasanto. Liberate yourself from mentality of the past that has kept you in waiting for so long without achieving anything. You come to me to pray for every day when you are not willing to invest your entire self in things and ventures and investment that will have placed you at the top of the world. Ask
ask of me and I will show you a problem that you will solve and you will be properly paid big money. See Farakatwante Lumbakwandarakata See Fonde Rumbarakwa Siankande Baswande Kaye when I choose a big problem for you to solve, I will make sure that the Holy Spirit, your helper, is right there. I will make sure that I watch out for you. I will make sure that angels are called into such activity to make it easier for you. You should only go towards the best. Stop being a victim and become a world-class ruler. Le Rakwanda, Seifunda, Likori Seifaro Kante, Sirandomba Kwanta Seyabra, Suwekende Basukende Remba, Santori Kandombra Tuasa, Please mute your phone. The person that just came in, please mute your phone. Sudbaru Kante Sere. Thank you, Geneva. Malulambala Kashanto. Likando Brike Taribaro. Sukando Bisaki Yando Brabi. I have never forgotten your name. I will never forget you. I am willing to give you the fatness of the earth if you will be willing to go by my principles. The principle by which I have given the biggest wealth to every human being that belongs to me is what my servant is teaching tonight. I am ministering through him. Listen, 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 because you have ears. Do not look for the cheap way out. Because cheap people never pleases me. Please write that down, Maxim. Cheap people never pleases God. I will remove from your life imagination and ventures. Thoughts and attitude of being cheap and moving with cheap people. Hey, Jarambakwandere, I will make sure that they do not influence you anymore. Because they have influenced you for a long time. You have listened to a bunch of lies and deceit and manipulation. Now you can see them and they will not see you. Because it was, the, it was the other way around. You couldn't see them. And they were seeing you. And that's why they manipulated you and betrayed you. I will make sure that before your enemy make a move, that you already knows what is about to happen. And move away before they are able to strike at you. My angels are rejoicing tonight because of what you are hearing. Because you are a candidate of greatness. Many of you believe that you came to the earth to be defeated and to fight devils. There is a place for warfare. But 90% of the time, shall be a quest for the blessing. And the blessing comes by asking me to show you a problem to solve and you in detail solve it with all your heart. If you want a small life, then that is what you're going to get. Unbelievers want the entire earth. Why don't you want more? 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. From this day forward, I am going to raise you up from where you've been sitting and waiting for me to come for you. I'm already here. Lambo Kataramba. I'm going to give you new strength. I'm going to give you new mind. I'm going to give you new spirit. I am healing your body. Many of you are going to feel my fire and energy inside your body. Because I am on in you. And I have come to occupy my special place. For those who want to solve special problems, says the Spirit of the Lord. Everybody lift up your hand and begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Thank you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joseph, 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 the grandson of Abraham, became the second wealthiest man in the world. He became the second greatest man in the face of the earth because he solved in fact, in the life of Joseph, Joseph solved problems for three groups of people or more. Number one, he solved a problem for the cupbearer of Pharaoh and the baker. Although the baker, it was not to his favor. The dream was not to the baker's favor. But the one that gives wine to the king, it was to his favor. And remember something, let me share this with you. Never do something without thinking about the ways that you are going to profit from what you are doing. Always think about the ways that you are going to profit from what you are doing. Always. Please, 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 always. If something, Maxine, write this down. If something is good, it must be paid for. Yep. Only, only something that is not good should be given away for free. But if something is good, it should not be free. Please write that down. If something is good, it should never be free. It should be paid for. Joseph also solved a problem for the king by using his natural endowment his natural talent which was the same talent that he became Mary has dreams dreams and interpretation of dreams magazine has the same gift i'll give you an example the meeting that i went to yesterday Magazine saw me in the meeting before the meeting took place and described exactly the person I was with. Hallelujah. I'm serious. And how everything turned and how everything turned out in the meeting. That's why you see me associate with some of you. It's because you have gifts and talents that I can tap into. I can be in. Or people who are going to look out for me are going to be a voice and ear and eye, a mouth, a leg, a hand, and a heart for me. Listen carefully to this. Hallelujah. Listen carefully to this. Joseph solved the, a dream problem that was an economic problem. He actually, some people just say, oh, just have interpreted a dream and the rest is history. Rubbish. Joseph solved an economic problem. So it was not just that Joseph interpreted a dream. No. He solved an economic problem for the cup bearer because he was returned back to his job so that he kept having a job and making money. <laughs> you didn't see it that way. Now you see it. Oh, wow. Every gift given to you by God is an economic gift. No matter how you look at it. Please write it down for me, Maxim. This is so important. I'm going to shout it from space. I'm going to shout it from everywhere. 
that every every gift that is given to you is an economic gift. <laughs> you thought it was just for you thought it was just to yeah you, yeah this is a revelation. Yes, yeah, many of you are smiling now because you know that you are in the zone. <laughs> You are in the zone now. See, that's why I ask you. To, that's why I ask you to roll, roll, roll with this black boy because he will, he will, he will, he will give you the good thing. <laughs> See? Yeah, I am. I agree. <laughs> I ask you, roll with this black boy. It's going to be good. going to be good. I'll give you TLC. Tender, loving care. Supernatural. Natural. Economic. Everything is there because heaven says that I'm called opportunity. That's my nickname in heaven. Opportunity. Wow. And until, magazine write it down, until your nickname is opportunity, you won't have money, you won't have nothing. <laughs> Please write that down. Until your nickname, until your nickname is opportunity, you won't have money, you won't have nothing. <laughs> Interesting. I want the nickname too. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Let let me let me let me release a revelation to you. Cannot be imparted. Yeah, yes, it could be imparted. Yeah, it could be imparted. Yeah, there is no gift that could not be imparted. I mean except except when you begin to reach the second and third level of the anointing, it's a different ball game. The fourth level could be, but not those other ones. But let me share with you. Did you guys know? Did did you guys know? Did it occur to you? that every angel in heaven is a billionaire did it occur to you some of the angels actually like the archangels are multi-trillionaires multi-trillions i'm talking trillionaires in their assets and investments i'm serious each of them is what that what they possess just don't think about what the bible says the way they are created the way they look their outfit the, the clothes they wear the rings on their fingers think about that can i share something with you have you ever smelled an angel have you ever smelled the way they smell? And know that the cologne they use or the perfume they use is a million dollar bottle. I'm serious. It's a million dollar bottle. This is interesting. Every angel is a billionaire. If we are going to talk about it in terms of money, I'm serious. <laughs> so do not be afraid of wealth and money because you need it. Because every gift that God has given to you, whether it be a supernatural gift, whether it be a natural gift, whether it be a mental gift, imaginative, cognitive, however, is an economic gift. When Abraham solved the problem for God, didn't God say he's going to give him a nation? What is a nation? Do you run a nation on zero, on E, empty? No. He gave him wealth and riches. Physical, we are not talking of, what we are discussing tonight is, is how the supernatural remember that the theme of my ministry forever is manifesting the supernatural the supernatural is manifested 
for economic gain, not just for spiritual enjoyment. It's for economic gain. God said, I'm going to give you the land of other people. That's what he told Abraham. Economic gain. Maxine, you must help me. Let's put this. Let's put this talk together. Because this is going to be very, very important. Please, write down what I'm just saying. God give Abraham. Write down what I'm saying about Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. I'll give you a land for economic gain. Give you a nation. That's, econo that's economic gain. That's money, material resources. House, everything. Jesus told Peter and the rest of them, anyone who has decided to follow me, I will give houses. He included houses, physical houses. It's not something of, in my father's house, I'm in mansion, he's not, I will not. No, 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 no. He's talking of in the physical planet. Any God that will not give you cars, houses, health, beautiful things, is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Please write that down for me. Any God that is unwilling to give you the best things of this earth is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of the treasury. <laughs> Please write that down. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of the treasury, God of the economy, God of real estate, God of the big money. Please write that down. Hallelujah. I'm going to make you a great nation. Economy. I'm going to make you great. You cannot be great with zero. <laughs> You cannot, yeah. be, you cannot be made great with E. Just like you see some people say, How are you, brother? Oh, blessed and highly favored. Really? And you look at him, you say, Poor thing. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Blessed and highly favored. Really? Huh? Hey, hey. Jesus, have mercy on your apostle. Like the Miss Girl of Florida, she said, bless your heart. And you don't know that she's mocking you. Bless your heart. God means exactly what he said, but the God we are dealing with is a God of economy. A God of big money. The God of houses. I want those who follow my ministries, those who follow me because I follow Jesus, those who follow me because I follow the Father, those who follow me because I follow the Holy Spirit, and I will never lead you astray. I want Amen. them, I want, I want to begin to see as the years unravel of my members who own every piece of property on both sides of the street where they live. See, until you want something, God will not give it to you. Please write that down. Until you seriously want something, God will never give it to you. Interesting. Interesting. Let me say this to you. Joseph solved an economic problem for the, the cup bearer, for Pharaoh, and not only that, and, and Joseph also solved an economic and political problem for himself and his family. See, Joseph actually gave himself a job. You get it? Pharaoh did not give Joseph a job. Joseph did not apply for a job. He actually told Pharaoh, I need a job. This is what he did. He said, you see, in the seven years, look at how Joseph put it. He's pretty smart. 
We think that when you become a Christian, you should leave your brain in, in preschool or kindergarten or daycare and just go without brain into the world and just display spirit. Are you serious? Spirit depends on your brain. Your brain depends on spirit. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> without mind, spirit doesn't work. Without spirit, mind doesn't work. Joseph said to Pharaoh, During the years of plenty of food, of grains and crops in Egypt, you need a man with a wise and understanding and smart spirit who understand business and the economy. Are you getting it again? You need a man who understands business and the economy to supervise to supervise the gathering of food into granaries. Set up granaries all over Egypt and put food in all of them. Put grains there. And do you know what Pharaoh said? This is what Pharaoh said. Is there any man who is more smarter, wiser, and understanding in the business of the economy? Since you have the spirit of, he call it the spirit of the gods, since you have the spirit of God in you, that you are able to see these things, you are able to interpret my dream, you have this gift, it means that you are the one that should carry out this. If you are able to interpret my dreams, and now you are also giving me suggestions. Oh boy. You are also able to give me suggestions. Should I mute the phone, please? Should I mute everybody? This is ridiculous. Pharaoh then said to Joseph, If you are able to think this smart, then you are the one for the job. People of God, Joseph suggested the job. Joseph suggested a job to Pharaoh. He put imagination thoughts into him. And Pharaoh said, I buy it. Some of you will only go to somewhere and just dark and solve a problem and they give you food to eat and give you 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 50 and you are happy and you go away. Joseph said, no, not me. I need the throne also. So, Joseph used his gift to put himself in places of economic wealth and riches and political freedom, social economic freedom, wealth for his family. That's why he brought his family from the land of Canaan to Egypt. And he gave them the best part of Egypt to live. He did. Because this, this is the reason why you must do things the way I'm, suggest I'm, I'm putting to you, not suggesting the way I'm putting it to you tonight. You see, your aim is to be in position of money and power so as to make sure that the outcome of event in your territory or in your world will favor God. And God's people. Please write that down. The reason why you must be in the position of wealth and money is to influence the outcome of events for good. Write that down. 
for God and for the righteous. Please write that down. For God and for the righteous. If you look at the life of of David, David was rewarded for putting Goliath to sleep. He was rewarded. David understood that everything is tied around the economy. He did. That's why he did not just go to war. He made sure that he brought back things, gold, money. He brought back, he brought back riches through warfare to the house of God and for himself and for the people of God. So even, I mean, everything David did also was tied around political gain and economic gain. Every deliverance of God, every leadership of the Holy Spirit for David to do war was to give him something in return. Economic freedom, money, gold, silver, bronze, just name it. It was from what he collected from the war that he used to put aside for Solomon to build the temple. Excuse me. Think about that. So when you read the Bible, the pastors are simply telling you, ah, they went to war, God did this for them, la, 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 la. They don't look at it the way I'm looking at it. Economic freedom. They solved a big problem. They conquered nation. David conquered the nations and brought them under his feet and they paid him they paid taxes and tribute it's all about the economy to the nation of israel think about that so it was not just the worship of god worship must lead to profit worship must lead to economic pro uh, progress please write that down Worship must lead to profit and economic gain. Because through worship you receive divine activation of your spirit in order to influence your mind to gather wealth. The reason why the economy is at the bottom of spirituality, please write that down. The reason why the economy is at the bottom or behind spirituality is at the bottom or behind spirituality is to release is to release greatness through economic enterprise. Let me put it in another way. The reason why wherever you see spirituality, you see the economy, is so that profit will be released, happiness will be maximized, money will increase. Because spiritual life is to enhance and kick in your mind. It activates. See, the spiritual life, write it down, must, must enhance your mind, must activate your mind to function speedily, to solve human problems. And you are rewarded with big money. That's what David did. All the alliances that Solomon formed was for economic reason. <laughs> ha 
Ruth solve a love problem. Delivered Naomi from depression. And she went to Boaz's farm and began to solve economic problem. The result? He fetched her the man who owns the farm. The richest man in town. And now she's in charge of the world. See that? Esther solved a problem for the Jewish people. In return, they now became in charge of things. The young Mordecai now was in charge of the house of the kingdom. The second ranking officer outside the husband of, of Esther. And Mordecai became the second most richest person in Persia. The Jews now control the economy. See that? Go and read the book of Esther. You will see. <laughs> you will see. Other pastors simply tell you the story. They do not tell you what is behind the story. The aim of God is to give you the economy. The aim of God in every way you are is for you to aid, is for you to conquer and control the money power. It's for you, in fact, the aim of God in relating with you is to lead you to be in charge of money and material resources. The economy, the economic power must reside with you. And that's what God has sent me to do in our world. See, it's always the same thing. You cannot conquer your enemies and just let them go. You must seize their property. That's how it was in the Old Testament. They seize their property. They seize through everything. They seize everything and own it. They own the land. They own the house. They own everything. And God said, He is going to give His children houses they never built, wells they did not build, etc. God is not stupid. He wants you to live in plenty. And he wants to advance you the knowledge to be able to be in charge of the economy. To run it and to feed fat from it. Please write that down. God wants to give you the knowledge to run the economy of your land, of your nation, so that you can feed fat on it. And make good policies. Write that down. Hallelujah. I can go on and on and on and on. Daniel solved problems for the kings of Babylon and, and Persia, etc. Go and see how he was rewarded. He became one of the top ranking officers. Everywhere you have seen God appeared in the life of any human being, you see money appear. You see them in charge of the economy. Do you know that if you needed any favor from the king in the days of Elijah and Elisha, you go to them and they will talk to the king and you get whatever you wanted. Read the Bible, you'll see it. It's there. The desire of God is for each of you to be in the corridors of power. Please write it down. The desire of God is for each of his son or daughter to be in the corridor of power and not to be outside the corridor of power. The desire of God is for you to be among the policy makers and policy implementers so that the outcome of the economy will be better for your people and for you. And God has asked me tonight to talk to you about the economy. Because a lot of Christians have given up on the economy. And let me, I'm going to unmute the phone, the, the phone, the phone line. Let me just see.
People of God, can I tell you one sad event that is happening in the world? Unbelievers are now taking over in the economy and the money system. The Arabs and the Asians, unbelievers who don't know Jesus, are buying up the farms, buying up the real estate, buying up the shopping centers. They are now in charge of the gas station. If you find one or two white men or women who still own things in some of the, thank God, talk less of black people. I went to Grand Avenue Market. Almost everyone there is either a Hindu or a Muslim. I only saw one black woman, African American, who had a business there. Just one. And that's not funny. That is not fair. Show me one place where God told a human being to do something that he did not attach money and wealth to it. Your, 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 your prayer tonight should be. What is our prayer tonight, Miss Geneva? Good. Good. That's our prayer tonight. And if you want to do yourself a favor, whether you're on the line tonight, whether you are watching this video, because I'm going to promote this video, I am asking you right here and now to begin to ask God. Geneva, repeat what we should be praying about. Let me share something. If you send money to my ministry, or you've been sending money to other ministries, please start sending those money to my ministry. I'm simply being very frank. Because I understand how this thing works. Now, if you have been, if you have been, if you have been investing into the kingdom of God through money, etc., I'm going to tell you something. Then, God owes you money and cars and houses and better jobs with a bigger problem for you to solve to have bigger money. God owes you money. Jesus owes you money. If you have ever sent a dime to my ministry, right here, right now, tell God you owe me money. Give me the money you owe me. He said a hundredfold. That means God is a debtor to you. You never hear pastor saying this. Now you are hearing it. God owes you money. For example, I've sent money to different people, different organizations. Years after years, people owe me money. People owe me money. Human beings owe me money. They owe you money. So God owes you money. Human beings owe you money. Next thing, you help this physical planet by showing into the world to help people out there. Christians, non-Christians, Ask the universe to give you money. The universe owes you money. Human being owes you money. God owes you money. So begin to pray. Number one, if you're listening to what Geneva said, she said, tell God to find you a big problem to solve in the right location so that he will release big money to you. Number two, tell God to give you the money he owes you. Tell the universe to give you the money and the things they owe you. Tell the people of this earth 
to give you what you're entitled to because they owe you money. They owe you houses. They owe you property. They owe you cars. They owe you opportunity, privileges, all this. Begin to pray. There is no special formula. Just jump into it and say, Lord, you owe me money. I need my money right now. Hundredfold now. Universe, you owe me money. You owe me this. Tell God you owe me this. You owe me that. You owe me that. Whatever that you want, that money or things you give to God. If you if you if you give clothes to people, you give shoes, you you've given people cars, both God and humans and the universe owe you money. Ask them to give you what you entitled. They owe you cars, they owe you houses, they owe you positions of authority. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Don't waste time here, please. Let's pray. Universe, you owe me money, you owe me cars, you owe me open doors, people you owe me, God you owe me, you must give to me the different thing that I need. I also am asking you, Holy Spirit, Jesus, I'm asking you, Father, I'm asking you to give me problem that is equal to me, that you can help me to solve. Give me a big problem to solve that will give me big money. In Jesus' name, thank you for giving this to me. Bring to me people with problems that I am capable of solving for them. With both my natural talent and spiritual talents, let it be big problems that I can solve. And let, let it be a problem that when I solve it for people, they will reward me millions and billions. I ask this in Jesus' name. I believe that it is done. Don't send me people who will never reward me. Do not let them come and waste my time. Give me big problems with a big pay, a big fat check, big fat money order. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to me because this is the shortcut to wealth and to riches. I am willing to solve problems for other human beings. I am willing to solve problems for other human beings. Lord, trust me with the ability to solve other people's problems. But let it be people, groups, organizations, nations who will reward me with property, with land, with cars, with, with private jets, with everything that I've ever needed in life. So as to live in luxury and so as to help people solve more problems and advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Lord, send me professional people. Send me people in high places. Send me people who have the wealth, but who have money, material resources, who will be able to pay me for my services. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. In 
in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, don't leave the phone please. I have an announcement to make. You are going to see this week, maybe beginning from tomorrow, depending on uh, how my body will react to things so that I will, I will start working. We are going to rework certain things on our website, so look out for changes. But I want to tell you ahead of time before you even see it on the website. Please let everybody be aware of this. We do not want scattered things here and there. We want to to put things very, very effectively. We want to be effective. We want to be very effective. This is what we have decided to do. The program that we have in the morning that's called It's Possible we will no longer be having it on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It will no longer be available. It will be available three days a week so that everybody, everything work together. People really begins to call the ministry whether they call the office or they call the prophetic lines or to come to conferences from Thursdays. So this is what we decided to do. So that I do not want you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to come to the morning prayer. Please don't come. Victoria, Victoria would like you to on those three days to be there only for five minutes to tell the people that the program is on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So this is all of our programs. All of our programs will now be on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's it. The offices will remain open. The offices will remain open from Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The office is open only on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The office is not open on Saturday or Sunday or Monday. And both the morning prayer and the evening conferences are only on, we want to do everything on the same days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that's it. So, it's the same time. Thursday, 9 a.m. for the morning program. 9 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Central Time is 10 o'clock East Coast, 7 o'clock West Coast in the morning. All of our program now is 9, in the mo 9 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock at night. So on Thursday we have two programs, nine in the morning, in the morning, nine at night. Friday, nine in the morning, nine at night. Saturday, nine in the morning, nine at night. At least you will be able to remember, so that there is no confusion. This one is by ten o'clock. This one is by nine o'clock. So everything is nine nine. So that if you are able to come the one of the morning and you have to walk, you have your job in the night, you've already had your spiritual life going on with us in the morning. And for those who cannot make it in the morning, they'll be able to make it at nine. So if you do not make it at nine on Thursday, you can make it at nine at night. 
If you cannot make it nine on Friday morning, you can make it at nine on um on a uh, on a um, on a uh, yeah in the evening. So so that so that I'm giving you Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four days for you to watch the videos, for you to pray and fast, for you to digest all the big things that I've given to you throughout the week. Because we'll be featuring eight things. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So six videos will come out during the week. And they will be loaded. Now let me tell you the good news. Thursday morning, I also want baby to be aware of this. Baby, my sister, is really interested in in the healing ministry. The healing, it will be, will be very strict on this. Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays also are going to be our days of fasting in our ministries. So that we can have the greater result. There will be days of separation and fasting so that we can have the greatest supernatural manifestation. And not be limited. Hallelujah. So on Thursday morning, Amen. on Thursday mornings, we will be doing healing service from nine o'clock. Now on Saturday, on Friday and Saturday, we will be doing varieties. In the morning, there will be varieties. For example, I'll have somebody to talk about diabetics, how to prevent it, how to eat healthy, sports. Uh, car, real estate, I'll have people talk about politics, money, different kind of varieties of activities. Cooking, I will have people cooking, cooking right here where I am. And you guys will be watching how the, the, the cooking taking place right here. I'll have the people coming to show you the different kind of food that you are to eat for your health. I'll have doctors coming to talk to you, medical doctors and nurses. I'll have politicians come to talk to you. So those activities will take place on Thursdays, uh, on Fridays and Saturdays. Those are the days that you will have that in the morning at the 9 o'clock. So this is going to be beautiful. I'll have guest pastors coming to chat and talk with you guys on different subjects. So this is going to be fun. I'll, I'll, I'll have Florence, I'll have Shandell, I'll have... I'll have, uh, I'll have um, uh, 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 Mark Zim, my associate pastors, all of them will be coming to come and minister also. So it will not just be I alone ministering on Fridays and Saturdays. You have these different faces coming and going. It will be very beautiful. So I think you guys will enjoy it better. I have, I have women. I have women parties. You see only women, women coming for their party. On maybe on a Friday, men will be coming for their prayer breakfast on Saturday. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice. So we are going to enjoy. It. You see how God is changing all of this for us. So I am so happy that this is the way it's gonna be, and so on and so forth. So I you are going to be a happy person because that's the that's the aim of this whole thing. So remember that you can call the office Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's all. The office is open from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock Central Time. And this is what we'll be doing. If you cannot call me between the hours of 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, wait till the following day. Because if you call, I'm not going to be picking up the phone. Because there are certain things that I am mandated by needs to do. So if you want to get me, get me when the office is open. If you try to get me after office hours, strictly speaking, we will return your call the following day. So I'm saying this to you so that you will not hate me. Just being frank to you. And also I want you guys to know, those of you who when you call me and I do not pick up the phone, you think that I do not love you. I want you to know that there are people who are already on appointment at the time you call. So when you call and I said, I'm going to get back with you, it means that 
I am ministering to people who are on that time. That time was made for them. You see, I'm not just like a church pastor who only works on Sunday. And from Monday to Saturday, they prepare their sermon. No, mine is more than that. So when you call, I do not pick up. Leave me a message. And don't get angry. Because there are too many people who seek my service. All I can ask you is for this. I need your prayer and I need your financial support so that I will be available for you. Because we are running out of the kind of pastors like myself. We are running out of pastors who will do one-on-one -on -one with you. We are running out of them. We, we, we may not have it for too long. I'm serious. So that's what I want you to know. Please let everybody know this. Post it on your website, on your social media site. Let family members know that all of our services begin on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturday. And that is it. That the office open from five, uh, from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening central time. On Tuesday, like tomorrow, I will not be answering no phone call tomorrow. There is no phone call that will be answered tomorrow morning. No matter who, it will never be answered. If something has an emergency, those of you who are like my small circle, you know where how to get me. The rest, just leave me a voicemail. I will take care of it at the next business day. So that's all I want to tell you. So if you are looking to join us in our morning prayers, those morning prayers are 9 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And the evening program, 9 p.m. also. So either you attend the 9 a.m. one, you attend the 9 p.m. one. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 9 a.m., 9 p.m. 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Which is 10 a.m. East Coast, 10 p.m. East Coast. Same time. 7 a.m. West Coast, 7 p.m. West Coast. I mean, it's fun. You can remember that very easily. So I hope this will make you happy. And remember that if you want to contribute to our ministry, so you will see special seed and so on, as God has blessed you. And send in your prayer request. Please, you can do that by going to www.ibkmarriedministry.com. You can also write, uh, there you can also see a lot of our resources to know what we are about. Although most of those things are going to change this week. Next thing. I want I want you to be aware that you can also write to us at P.O. Box 2491 Wichita, Kansas State 67201 USA. Email the administrator at idikaimeria at idikaimeriaministry.com you can write to me personally. You can email me personally. It be Mary 2000 at gmail.com. You can contact our prophetic line. And that line is 702-992-0792. Call the office between the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. And... That num those numbers are 315, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, 316-665-4400. Again, 316-665-4400. Or 316-243-2967. And um, is there anybody who has a question or anybody who has something to contribute to tonight? It has God spoken to you about anything? What have you learned? 
Let's summarize and then we go. And Alexis, if you have any any announcement to make uh, or to remind us of anything or Maxim or Geneva or Florence or Vadim, please let us know before we say good night to everybody until I will see you on Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday night or uh, you will call the office on Tuesday from 8 o'clock to 5 p.m. Central Time. Is there anybody who has any question? Anybody who want to say anything? Anybody who has been blessed? Anybody? Yeah, anybody who's been blessed with special seed that you want to sow? Because we need your seed in order for us to be a blessing to you. Go ahead, Vadim. Uh, I want to thank you for the prophecy. You spoke how all my family, my brothers and sisters, we can never can talk out and come together. So I am at my sister's house in Florida, my other sister here, and my brother's coming here in a couple days. So that's beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Congratulations. Congratulations to your family. Congratulations, all of you. Yeah. Please keep please keep some steaks for me. And we are praying for the Russian church that um, is running in your family. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. And let there be the manifestation of the supernatural in your midst. Amen. 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 And I've been talking to all of us. Maybe you can come this way in the house, church. Okay. Like, All right, we will do that. Tell yeah. tell Albert to we'll try and be. Later. Yeah, we will talk later about that. That will be nice. That will be nice. We are looking for new pastors and new places for missions, so that will be a good one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I have another thing. I was at the, uh, at the beach today, and something led me to talk to this lady, and she came home uh, So each of you, as you as you go back to your go back to your place of rest tonight, please remember to pray for Kali in Florida. Thank you. Somebody else has something to share. Thank you, Vadim. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Vadim. Thank you. All right. If there is nothing, and uh, I wanna say to you all, remember that with God, all things are possible. And we are, since we are comfortable with the manifestation of the supernatural, the supernatural will manifest in your life. This is Idikai Mary saying to you, good night, and I will see you beginning on Tuesday, and also on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Bye-bye.